Welcome to the Better Off Bonus Call of the Week. We're sponsored by Betterment, the largest independent online financial advisor. I love dropping this extra episode every single week. It is a chance for us to dive deep into your financial life and also to kind of hear what's on your mind. That helps us create the content that we think you want. So if you'd like to get on the program with us, just send an email, askjill at betteroffpodcast.com. Ask Jill at betteroffpodcast.com. That's what Phil did. He's from Tennessee. Phil, welcome to Better Off. What can I do for you? Well, thank you. So, I don't know, 15 years or so ago, my employer, you know, like a lot of other employers, decided to get rid of the traditional defined benefit pension and, you know, move everybody to a 401k. You know, and they upped their matching and all, which was nice. They didn't have to do that, I guess. But one thing they did do was they created this thing they called a personal pension account. And it seems to act or has acted like a savings account and grown very slowly, but it never went down. Like even during the financial crisis, you know, it just kind of grew at a very small interest rate. Uh, But anyway, I'm 58 and I'm I'm looking to retire and start a a new career. And... um, I've got this choice to make of what to do with this account. Mm -hmm. They're basically saying I can take a lump sum. Mm -hmm. They will purchase an annuity for me. And, you know, there's like 100 different flavors of the annuity (laughs) between me and my wife. And, you know, does it disappear when I die? Does it disappear when she dies? Does it stay level until the last one dies? You know, all that kind of thing. Uh, But in the fine print, it does talk about, that it's subsidized for people that are retiring early and implies that the subsidy gets smaller and smaller the closer you get to 65. I found a calculator on the Internet somewhere where I could compare a lump sum with an annuity and put all the interest rate to kind of see, uh, you know, uh, what might be the best choice. And, and for somebody 58 like myself, if I was to live 30 years, the – I just took one example. If I just did it for myself until I die, say I live 30 years, it, it would pay $1,152 a month. And according to the calculator, it said that's about seven and three quarters percent Whoa. interest rate. Whoa, that's and awesome. I, and I was kind of like, well, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah, that, that's not uh, that pretty then, good. That's awesome. Because that's, remember, one thing about that is it's a guarantee. So right. it's it's one thing to say, you know, oh, 7.75 percent in, you know, last year, you might say to yourself, oh, but the stock market did so much better. But this is a 7.75% guarantee for 30 years. That's a yeah. huge number. I, w- and, I wonder if it, then, go- it probably goes down if you do, because I don't know if I would do your straight life, but like, keep talking. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And, you know, if I, if there was a bunch of different options and, and I don't remember all the numbers, uh, but, you know, obviously it went down if I did to cover my wife's life. There's all kinds of options, you know, like you mm-hmm. could do 75% after I die for my wife or 50% after I die for my wife or, you know, all that kind of stuff. So let me ask uh, you a question. When you ran all those different scenarios, was it basically like somewhere between 5 6 7% based on whatever scenario you chose? So I, I didn't run all the scenarios in the calculator, um, and so I don't have that number for you. Mm-hmm. I, I I guess my initial reaction, you know, I've been hearing for, you know, 20 years from the trade press and people like you and all annuities are a bad idea. Don't go buy one. Well, mm. this is a case where I didn't go buy it. Somebody picked it for me. Right. Right. No, no, no. I don't and, think annuities are all bad. I think guarantees are great. Let's talk more about what's going on in your financial life. So you're 58. You're going to retire. You're 59. And you have a wife also. And how old is she? She's four and a half years younger. Okay. And does she work? She works part time. Okay, makes about twelve thousand a year. All right, and how much do you earn right now, Phil? One hundred eighty-four. Say that again. One eighty-four. Yes. Uh, how much do you guys need to live on? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, we almost got the house paid off. We only owe like twenty-six thousand on the house. I think. Mm-hmm. Um, I do have one more still in college. So for for the next year or so, I, you know, I need. To, to make money, um, and, and like I said, I'm going to take another job, and I'm going to make almost as much in my new job. It's just that I'm technically retiring from my current job. Okay, so that's good to know. All right, I, I intend to work 
till I can qualify for Medicare, at least. All right, so you're good till 65. The personal pension savings account, how much money is in there right now? 172000 All right, and tell me about the rest of your retirement savings. What else do you have? I have about some hundred and forty, some hundred and fifty thousand in a four hundred one k. I've got about twenty thousand in an IRA. I've got my wife's got one hundred and fifteen thousand in an IRA. Um, we've got not as much taxable, you know, outside of retirement savings. I like we did put girls through private schools and college and everything, but mm-hmm. we got about twenty six thousand in savings. We got, I've got um, about. Seven thousand in cash in my brokerage account. Um, we've got ninety-four thousand dollars in stock in my current employer. Um, Do you have to exercise that when you leave? When you retire? No, I can. Okay. I, I can. I can basically do nothing and have it. You know. I'll just sit there and wait until I decide what to do later. I got you. But you're thinking that I might as well start the clock because it is, it seems that that subsidized part of the pension, of the personal pension, is reduced as you get older. So I, are you saying to me that you think what you're, what you're contemplating is sort of work for another year, let this thing go for another year, and then at the moment you do retire that you will annuitize this potentially – or should you roll it into just a general IRA rollover, which you would may do with your current 401k? Mm. Is that about the right question? Well, maybe a little different. I guess I was thinking if it's only earning 2%, you know, if it wasn't with, for this subsidy, I would probably just roll it into my 401k and, and invest it a little more aggressively. Sure. But, but since there's this subsidy, I'm wondering, well, gosh, when I turn 59 and a half in like nine months, do I just go mm-hmm. ahead and take the annuity to have a, you know, to get as much of the subsidy as I can. Right. Go ahead and even start taking it, even though I'm still going to work another seven years. Right. Even though you don't need the money. I get you. When you were telling me about the annuity, that annuity that you you feel pretty confident about, I mean, I again, let's it's your straight life and I probably wouldn't have you do straight life, but let's let's make up some numbers. Let's pretend that you just do sort of a a, a joint and 50 like a 50% for your wife would get 50% of it cuz it's nice to have a little income maybe. If if it were like a guarantee of say 5 or 6% for 30 years, that's a pretty nice guarantee to have. Um, I know it's not a huge dollar amount relative to your overall net worth, but if we presume when you are 65 that you will need, I mean, you sound like you're good savers. So I'm kind of, I'm trying to go backwards and say that, you know, if you make 200 grand, how much are you really spending? Are you spending 10 grand a month? Is that possible? Like after college and after the house is paid off or does that seem high? It seems high after the college is paid off. So maybe eight grand a month. Does that seem reasonable? Maybe, maybe. You think that's even high, don't you? Depends on how much traveling we do. Let's say that you travel a lot. Why shouldn't you travel? You worked hard. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you a travel budget. How's that? <laughs> okay. All right. So you need, you need ninety six grand a year. You need a hundred grand a year, right? How much will you get in social security for both of you? Probably, I'll probably get like the maximum benefit because I've you know, paid enough for the last several years. Mm-hmm. I've made more than the maximum, mm-hmm. you know, that they withhold on. Mm-hmm. And then she'll get half of yours, presumably. I guess. Yeah. I haven't really looked into that. Yeah. But, okay. So we need to give you, we need to get you somewhere around five grand a month from your portfolio, which I mean, so here's the, here's the benefit of like taking this money as an annuity. Okay. Number one, it's a guarantee. And, you know, I'm going to make you go do a little homework and follow up with me just in terms of letting me know what the interest rate is if you did it like with a joint and survivor benefit. Because if you think about this, if you needed 8000 bucks a month and with Social Security as well as this annuity, you could get half of that guaranteed with no risk. Then the only thing you need to worry about is pulling money out of your portfolio which is, you know, basically nine um, is like a million bucks to give you the extra money. And I think that, you know, presuming that eight is like not even is a fat number, maybe it's seven a month, then you can do that very easily. And I think it's nice to have the income that's like half of your needs are covered just by Social Security and this pension income. 
this, you know, faux pension, we'll call it. So I think it's worth diving into this a little bit more and just really see what would the personal pension be if um, we did it a joint and 100 percent or joint and 50 percent. And if you, you wanted to see kind of like what would the payment be and what's the effective interest rate. And although even if the interest rate were 6 percent, it would be very hard for you for 30 years to consistently get 6 percent with no risk. And that's, that's why true. that's that's the piece of this that's really important. We don't have a, an effective way for you to get risk free. It's not risk free because we have to make sure that the annuity they pick is not going to be with some like, you know, Joe's insurance company. But presuming it's a good company that I think that you might really want to take a look at this and see whether it makes sense because in in your life you're young you're still going to work you're probably not even going to touch this money to you know i know like you said till you're 65 66 years old so you're going to keep saving i just think that you'd be in such it's just such a nice place to be if you have i don't know 1.3 million by the day you retire and then you know of that i can generate 40 45 grand a year with no muss, no fuss. And then I also have my social security. And then I also have this pension money. I think that's like a really nice game plan for you. And it is one where if it sounds like you're the one who kind of manages some of the money that if your wife doesn't like managing money to know that half of my income is kind of coming in and safe and secure for a while. That's that's nice, too. All right. Well, thank you. Good luck. Appreciate it. Bye bye. Okay, that's a wrap of our Better Off Bonus Question of the Week. If you've got a question, it's simple. Send us an email at askjill at betteroffpodcast.com. We'll arrange to get you on. And don't forget, in just a couple of days, there's a brand new episode of the Better Off Podcast sponsored by Betterment. Talk to you then. Betterment.